Why, well, hello there. Today we are going to talk about my past, present, and future of books. So recently I finished the book Looking Glass Sound by Catriona Ward. This comes out in August, in the beginning of August of this year. I freaking love Catriona Ward. She writes the twistiest of all the twistiest books ever. And this book is twists within twists within twists in it. And it's a book within a book within a book. It's pretty wild. And it follows the story of Wilder Harlow. And it kind of follows you through his whole life from, you know, when he was in school and he was kind of nerdy and awkward and weird looking and then his family inherits this cottage that he makes these two friends when he moves there and their names are Nathaniel and Harper and kind of how they become this trio of really close friends and also there's this serial killer that was there at the same time as them and like delving into that story and how it affects them. They call them the Dagger Man. This Dagger Man also would go and take these Polaroids of these kids with like a dagger up to their throat while they're sleeping and then leave them there and never killed any of the kids but left these Polaroids and that was pretty freaky to the parents and whatnot. It follows him and his summers there as he grows up and then also when he goes to college Wilder meets this person named Sky and they become very close and Sky ends up basically like taking Wilder's life story and kind of stealing it and then putting it out as a book and that's kind of effed up and that kind of you know put a big rift <laughs> in their relationship and friendship. At some point you get back to Wilder as an adult going back to the cottage where he had grown up and spent those summers and he's gonna write a story about it, you know, maybe set the record straight. And then he starts finding these notes scattered throughout the cottage with the green writing that was Skye's signature, because Skye always had a green pen that they were writing from, and like then Wilder wonders if he's kind of going crazy and what's happening, and I don't know, this might be a new favorite of mine for Catran Award. It was such a good story and so twisty and so weird, and it was the writing, just the way she describes stuff is very like eloquent and emotional and just vivid and it was so good and I loved it so much so if you're a Catrian Award fan you have to read this if you're not get on it and check her out she's got so many awesome books The Last House on Needless Street, Sundial, Little Eve and now this one Looking Glass Down it's fantastic and so then I read the manga Tombs by Junji Ito and this is my first Junji Ito it was so weird and wondrous I don't read enough manga because I don't ever really know like where to start art and what to get but I put a post up on Instagram and I got a couple suggestions for stuff so I put some stuff on hold at the library to kind of check out I'm gonna dip a toe in the waters of manga a little bit more because you know you can read it so quickly and I enjoy the artwork too like you know you have the images before you that create the story going along with the text and that's cool it was awesome and twisted and weird and I loved it I like the stories some were like super weird and ridiculous. There was one in there, Slug Girl, and that one. Oh man, that one was freaking weird. I'm trying to think what my favorite one was. Honestly, I mean the namesake of it, Tombs, that story is pretty good and weird. It's super weird. They're all weird. So now I want to obviously read more Junji Ito. Okay, so currently I am reading Venus Underground by Jeff Vandermeer and also this cover. Dude. Dude. Look at it. Oh, it's purpley nerpley and you know, look at all those eyeballs. Bleeding rainbows. This book is so weird. I am at a loss of how to describe it. There's these three main characters, Nicholas, Nicola, and Shadrach. It is a time when the world has gone through just a bunch of crap where AI had kind of taken over and then there was a downfall between the underground and the above ground and bioengineering is a big thing and there's all these weird creatures that are being created that maybe shouldn't be created. Nicholas used to be like an artist and all this stuff was taken from him and he was beat up and he uh he wants to get a meerkat or work for this person named Quinn and Quinn has like he creates weird creatures out of nothing and brings them to life and so Nicholas wants to go work for this person. Kind of Shadrach sends him on his way to doing this but it like sends Nicholas into this weird dark damage spiral and, and Nicola is his twin sister and she just does programming and does a bunch of like computery type stuff and you know she has a decent life and her and Shadrach used to be in love and were together but then they separated and it's kind of how their lives all come back into crossing paths and it's really demented and effed up and a lot of like terrible things happen. <laughs> 
happen and it's a dystopian world and i'm not describing this very well but it's freaking weird as crap let me read you the synopsis maybe that'll make more sense than i'm making in a dark and decadent far future the city of venus persists besides a dead ocean earth has become a desert wasteland ravaged by climate change venus endures on the strength of its innovative tech and almost Boschian intensity. But at what cost? Where does the line between made creature and person lie? And so that's like a big thing with like the made creatures and whatnot. Venus Underground spins the tale of Nicholas, an aspiring, struggling artist, his twin sister Nicola and Shadrach, Nicholas' former lover. A fateful trip by Nicholas to the Maverick Biotech Quinn will have far reaching consequences for all three and for the fate of Venus itself. An insurrection stirs and the oppressed begin to revolt. And I guess I didn't describe it too terribly, but yeah, that maybe that gives you a little more of the gist of what's going on in there. Okay, so another book that I picked up recently, I saw it at the library. I've had uh, two booktubers that I really like have mentioned this before. And I wanna say it was, I think the paper traveler read this. I feel like it was a while back and then Allison Pages and it's called Tomb of Sand by Gitanjali Shri. And this is the winner of the 2022 International Booker Prize. And I'd heard a lot of good things about it. It's a chunk of a book, it's like 600 pages. So I was kind of like, oh, do I want to get into a really big book right now? But yes, yes, I do. So let's tell you a little bit about it. We'll have some story time with Sin. 80 year old Ma slips into a deep depression after the death of her husband. Despite her family's cajoling, she refuses to leave her bed. Her responsible eldest son and dutiful daughter-in-law attend to her every need, while her favorite grandson, the cheerful and gregarious Sid, tries to lift her spirits with his guitar. But it is only after Sid's younger brother, Sirius' son, a young man pathologically incapable of laughing, brings his grandmother a sparkling golden cane covered with butterflies that things begin to change. With a new lease on life, thanks to the magic of the cane, Ma gets out of bed and embarks on a series of adventures that baffles even her unconventional feminist daughter, Betty. She ditches her cumbersome saris, develops a close friendship with a Hira, I don't know how to say that, with a Hira, and sets off on a fateful journey that will turn the family's understanding of themselves upside down. Rich with fantastical elements, folklore, and exuberant wordplay, Shri's magnificent novel explores timely and timeless topics, including Buddhism, global warming, feminism, partition, the gender binary, transcending borders, and the profound joys of life. And I think that sounds pretty awesome. So I'm very excited to get into that. And then I received a digital arc of a book called Mosaic by Catherine McCarty. This is being put out by Dark Heart Books. It's a horror book and it is about when a stained glass artist embarks upon the restoration of a church window. Her personal demons are put to the test when she unveils a conspiracy to reawaken a cosmic force. And that's all I've got of information on that book. But honestly, that one sentence kind of sounded fascinating to me. I think recently, like after reading the book Scorched Grace with like the stained glass cover and the weird elements of what was going on, like some kind of like religious horror is always interesting to me. And I find it kind of fascinating and just like getting a look into that. So I thought that would be a fun one to get into. So I will have more to tell you in the future. This one doesn't come out until early August as well. The release date currently is August 8th. I'm always weird about saying the release dates because sometimes they change. So if it does, you know, I can always change it down below in the description. So if you are a fan of videos where I talk about multiple things that I'm reading, the next video coming up will be a video about that. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.